Hello everybody, welcome again to the um, Fly Dressers Guild Bronze Award tutorials. Um, this is the third in our series of five flies and today we're going to be tying the Grey Boy Buzzer. Um, I've got a size 12 um, BHC 106 and that's the Barbers Hook Company's 106 which is a heavyweight buzzer. You can tie between a size 10 and size 14 um, on a variety of different wire thicknesses but this is quite a heavy weight um, it's entirely up to you what you do tie with as long as whatever you tie with it's consistent throughout the three that you submit um, black thread um, this is my UTC 70 denier and again a tie foundation thread all the way around the hook shank just using the waist thread to help to slip the thread into, into position. So I'm just going to take it just short of a halfway around the bend and then snip off the remnant. And then I'm going to introduce my silver wire, which is just um, fine silver, fil silver wire. And I'm doing it slightly differently to the handbook um, <clears throat> because I think you put too much bulk in at the bottom end if you introduce the thread, to introduce the um, ribbing and the uh, body material. So I'm going to just catch that in a bit more securely than that and pull everything through so that you haven't got any tags sticking out and then bind down all the way around to halfway around the bend and then we're going to park the uh, wire body material for this is um, this is heron sub but it wants to be a grey secondary or shoulder feather as opposed to a flight feather, which is a lot coarser in the material. Um, this is much softer and a lot easier to tie. So if you're relying on using um, flight feathers that you've picked up around the reservoir, then you will find that you'll struggle because they, they're a lot stiffer. And right at the quill, this bit here, is very thick so it's going to need about four for the size 10 and 12 and then three fibers for the size 14 and then just going to pull four fibers off well in fact cut the four fibers off and just going to cut the very tips off because they are going to be a bit fragile. So I'm going to tie that in and then pull everything down and then give it some stout turns and then bring the thread back in touching turns. So you're burying the, the ribbing and then stop just about half, just opposite, sorry, just beyond the halfway point. I'm going to park my thread there. And for those of you that have got vices that allow you to do that, I suggest you use it because the hurl is quite short and it's difficult to get it to go round the shank when it's very short. So I'm not twisting the fibres up, I'm just turning them around the hook shank in touching turns and you can see I'm securing it with my left index finger it just helps to keep everything in place you can put a bit of tension on as you pull it around but if you do let it go it will unravel so that's just to give you a little bit of extra security so when you've got to the position to tie it in then trap your waste material good 
three turns to secure everything and then cut it short and then I'm going to put a half hitch on there um, for riding the rib in case it gets knocked out of the way and unravels. So the rib is counterclockwise uh, so that it's the reverse for the body hurl and we're looking for about six or seven turns and they want to be evenly spaced and just check that they are evenly spaced and then you need because you're winding it in the reverse direction you need to make sure you get tight locking turns on there because the action of oops, come on down, the action of tying that off is encouraging the wire to lose tension so i'm just going to wind that through keep a firm pull on the thread and then you can worry the the tinsel off right the thorax cover is exactly the same material and I can use the front part of the feather you can see I've hacked at this one a bit but this material is equally as good so I only want a shorter piece for the thorax cover and on this occasion you want about eight fibres So I'm pulling those out and then cutting them off and then tying these in good side, which is the darker side, down and we want to try and make sure that the slip of feather goes around the hook to veil the hook so give yourself enough to tie down and tie in and then <clears throat> we've got to take a couple of peacock curls now by having it on the quill we can see the right length in terms of that length and the right size in terms of the fibers so that uh, you can be quite consistent right the way through um, there's no point in tying one with a very bulky thorax and one with a, a very slim thorax because you will get penalized for it so being able to if you haven't got access to the fibers on a quill then you need to go through and sort the packets out in advance so you get you know however many you're going to need to tie set out so we just cut the tips off and then trapping those underneath pulling them back and then bring the thread forward trapping everything off and burying it till you get to the eye position so now there's two different ways of tying this in you can tie them in together like that or you can reinforce them as sometimes i do so i'm going to come back and then i'm just going to put a a loop of tying thread in and then just put the hurl in between the loops of tying thread and then using a pair of tackle pliers, grip it all together and then twist it up. Now I can use a, a shepherd's crook twister. But it, what it does is create a uniform rope and it makes the thorax nice and tight. 
and fairly consistent. So in touching turns, bring it through, leave yourself about a millimetre and a half at the back from the eye because we need to bring the thorax cover over. finish the fly off so we don't want to have too much crowd in the eye so bring the thorax cover over and again you want to try and make sure that the material is going around the hook Make sure everything is looking okay. Give it a bit of a tug to make it nice and tight on the top. Two or three turns to lock everything in and then close crop. And then finally trap any fibres and whip finish. So you get a nice tidy neat head. Finally, the resin, in my case, or like um, head cement, if you're using Heli Hansen's or something, but this I find just very easy to apply and because it's UV, it doesn't dry. So it gives you a small amount of varnish at the head and the only downside is that you must, which you should do with all head cements, is make sure that it's clean. There's nothing more infuriating than getting to the river or to, or to the reservoir. And then find you've got an eye full of varnish or, or resin. It looks like it's on its way out. So, a little bit of UV light to set that off. And there you have it, grey, grey goose buzzer. No, it's not grey goose buzzer. I beg pardon. It's the yes, it is a grey goose buzzer, not not a grey boy buzzer. I beg pardon. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, see you next time.